Most of the time, most people think of surveyors and surveying as the way that you establish property boundaries, settle property line disputes, locate bridges, locate locate big structures or pieces of property or plats, subdivisions, and all that's true. But a surveyor can also locate a sidewalk, a cross gutter, an approach to a piece of property, or the location of a house on a lot. Now in all the years that I've done um, construction, in all the years that I've done residential construction, there's only been one other time that a surveyor had to actually locate a house on a piece of property. Because usually the house is the property is plenty big enough and the house will sit on there and plus or minus six inches or plus or minus four inches in the actual location doesn't make much difference. Now sometimes there'll be a five foot setback from a property line but usually you don't have to have a surveyor to locate just a single family residence. But this time I do because this lot is so tight and this house fills it up so completely that there are there's one point where it has to be located exactly in one spot and two other places where it has to be within inches and it is faster and more effective for me to bring Carl out with his machine to shoot these hubs in and know exactly where these corners are than it would be for me to pull string lines and take measurements and use the trigonometry that it would take and set string lines back from survey markers and take my best guess on getting those critical points absolutely perfect. Carl's really helping me today. The critical measurement was a 20-foot setback from the property line. The city required that. It was part of the permit approval process. And if it encroaches into that 20 feet, they could make me tear it down or file for a conditional use permit and effectively rent permission to encroach. I didn't want to do that. So we established, first of all, a line where that 20-foot drop-dead requirement would be, we would be in compliance. There were two other actually three other criteria that we had to optimize while we complied with that setback. The first was the clearance against the back wall. It gets narrow. There's a passage back there that I wanted to get to four feet. I had to settle for three foot eleven. Okay, I can settle for an inch. The next narrow pass was the front corner of act so that would dictate access into the front porch, the sidewalk, the front porch, and where the extreme southerly porch column bears on the lot so that it wasn't out and tangled up with the rocks. So we had to maximize that clearance. And then the third piece that required a pickup to test was access into the garage. So complying with the 20-foot setback, sliding back and forth, rotating the house, testing garage access with a pickup, we finally optimized or made best possible all four of those of those specific requirements that have to be right for this house to be really a desirable place to live. Okay, we're getting real close. So here's the challenge with hubs, particularly the hubs we're putting in today. We're putting these hubs in on the building corners, which means that as soon as the excavation starts, these stakes that we are locating so carefully are going to be dug out and probably thrown away. So how do I recreate these exact locations? Well, on other jobs that have more space, there are various ways. You can set batter boards out beyond the building lines, and a batter board is vulnerable, but it's pretty tough. You can have your hubs put in with offsets five foot by five foot offsets or seven foot by seven foot offsets or ten by ten so that that hub is at a known location that can be used to recreate the building corner but it's back away from the devastation of the excavator or the backhoe. So since there wasn't room here for an elaborate batter board system or big offsets to the hubs I had to be a little creative. What I did was establish a system of ledgers, a series of ledgers, four of them, against this retaining wall because this is going nowhere. I've bolted these with the top of the 2x4 at finished floor elevation, so I have that as a permanent monument. And then I just arbitrarily put screws in, a total of eight screws, labeled them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then very carefully took measurements from these swing ties by hooking a tape on swing tie A, swing tie B, and recording those two dimensions out to any particular corner and carefully 
legibly recording those two dimensions. I've done that for each of the major corners on the project. So once the hubs were gone, with two tapes and the measurements that I had documented off these swing ties, off these two by fours that are not moving, I have been able to be confident that I could recreate the exact location of the hubs that Carl had put in to within really small portions of an inch. The beauty and the confidence that I have in this is because of the strength of the wall and the permanence of these bolts and the fact that these screws are going nowhere. Because with, with a careful documentation of the location of the hubs off of these little, off this system, and then with getting close to accurate off of this system for the location of the footings, and then getting exactly accurate off of the system with the location of the stem wall on the footings, I will know that the house is exactly in the same place that Carl is locating with these hubs, even though, even though they have long since gone to uh, a, a reclamation project where we haul clean fill. They will be lost forever, but available right up through the entire footing process and foundation process because of these swing ties. So now I have confidence that this building fits. That feels good. And I know that it's properly located on the site. That feels even better. And so I can bring in my excavator and Brian's ready to go. He's held a spot in his schedule for me and we're scheduled ready to make this thing happen. And when we start digging this, we are going to be concentrating on location laterally and the grade, the elevation, will be up to me. Here's finished floor. I'll figure the elevation of the dig off of that. Now many times, in fact, I don't want to say most of the time, but in a large number of cases, the work a surveyor does is as specific about grades as it is about locations. We've got a good video about that on a project that we did in Arizona. Lots of information because a surveyor can tell you everything you need to know about where and how high and how low. Oh, that elevation. A fill means you are adding dirt to this spot until it is 72 hundredths above that elevation.